Hi, it's Lori from LoriStory.com. This video is the fourth in a series of Cricut Explorer basic tutorials designed to introduce you to the Cricut Explorer and Design Space software. In this video, we will explore the print and cut feature, including importing third party images as well as Cricut images, the flatten and unflatten tool, and which type of file works best for print and cut. Okay, so you're ready for print and cut. What is print and cut? Print Thin Cut allows you to take any image, a layered image from the Cricut Library, a printable image from the Cricut Library, a JPEG, a PNG, a BMP, even an SVG file, and print it as a one layered image and cut around it. Let me show you what we're talking about. Let's start with the Cricut images. Let's go to Insert Image. What you'll notice if you have all images selected and nothing in the search box is this very first image has a little printer icon. And this is from the image set Buccaneer. This was originally an Imagine cartridge and Cricut has imported all the Imagine cartridges and put those into the Design Space library for us to use as printable images. So let's grab that. Let's also grab just a plain layered image from the library. This is from Create a Critter 2. I'm going to grab that one. And then I also want to show you real quickly, if you're looking for something specific and you go over to this filter and you just want to see the images that are the printable images, you can just check this filter. And there are all kinds of printable images there for you. And you can also, you know, narrow your search down if you just want butterflies, put that in here, check printables, and it'll only bring up the butterflies. But for now, let's go back where we were. So we have the plain, we have a regular Cricut layered image here, and we have the printable image. So let's look at both of these. Okay. This is the layered image. This is the printable image. Let's put her aside first and look at the Cricut layered image. Now we know by looking at the layers panel, these are all blue, so we know this is grouped. We also know that there is a hidden layer here. This is the shadow layer. So the first thing we do, let's turn that off. Let's go over here, right click, ungroup. Okay, so right now this file consists of the red pieces for its hat. Grab, it's got the beige pieces for his base and trim. There's the orange and the black. So if we wanted to print then cut all these pieces separately, we would just simply go over to the layers panel, click on the scissors, and click print. And so then it's going to print all these separate pieces and we can just go in there and glue them together. But what if we didn't want to do that? If we wanted to just print him as one flat piece of paper, we don't want all the layers, we just want one flat piece of paper. What we do is select it, make sure we have all the layers, everything is lined up just the way you want it, and we hit this button called flatten. And that does exactly what it says. It flattened all those layers into one layer. And when you flatten something, it's automatically going to go to print. So if you turn this off, it's just one layer. There's no ungrouping this penguin. Everything is now one layer. So that's what flatten is. You're going to use flatten when you have a image that is more than one layer and you want it to print as just one layer. You're going to flatten all those layers together. If we changed our mind or we wanted to go in and change maybe hit the color of his hat to a different color. We can do that. We can go back, select him, unflatten him. That will open up all those layers again. We could choose his hat and say we want it blue. Okay. Now we can select the whole thing again and flatten. Now this is one piece, one layer, and it's going to be printed. So that's a regular Cricut image that's ready for print then cut. Let's look at this. These are kind of new. 
This is one image. The imagined images and the printable images come in as a already flattened image. But like this one, I showed you once you flatten it, you can unflatten it. These images, a lot of them have hidden extras in there in case you want to add some layers. So let's just hit unflatten and see if she has anything. And look, there's all kinds of stuff. Even though it was a flat image to start with, there's all these extras. So we can unhide them. And look, you could print this separately. You could print this separately. You could print her shoes separately. And this tie separately. And you could print and cut those just like this. And what you do, it, the, and what would happen is when it goes through to print then cut, it will cut each, it'll cut this hat out, and you can put that on top of the base layer. It will cut this scarf out, and you would layer that on top of here. We'll cut these strings out, and you would layer it there, and it would cut the shoes out, and you could put those there. So that would give some dimension to your original image. It will, however, cut the, let's take all these off. It will, however, cut this as one flat layer so that you will get all the details of her face and her hair and the coloring of her shirt and the boots. So let's put her back together because we're just going to concentrate on one layer. Make sure she's back together the way she was the first time so it's all lined up. So we select all of her, and again, we just want one flat image, so we need to flatten all these layers to one, so we hit flatten. And now she's one image that's going to be printed. So we'll set her up here. So that's your two different Cricut images. A traditional layered image that has been flattened into one, and this is the printable image. Let's look at how to do a JPEG file. For a JPEG, just as in the last video, we are going to use the basic upload, which imports JPEG, GIF, PNG, and BMP files. So we hit Upload Image. We're going to hit Continue. We're going to Browse. And I have on my desktop just a screenshot of an image I made this morning. And as in the last video, I usually use Complex Image. Hit Continue. Now if we look at this, let me scale down so you can see the whole thing. If we look at this and we look at the eye right now, all that the software is seeing is the, out, the outer edge of the image. And that's not what we want to cut. We want to cut around the pig. So we take the Select and Delete tool and we want to delete this white edge. Now let's look and see what it's looking at. This is the edge of our image and this is what we want to cut. So we hit Continue. Now this brings us to this window. This is very important. Right here is a checkbox and it automatically comes in checked. It says Prevert, preserve original image within shape recommended for printing. If you want to import all the details of this picture and, and you do since it's going to be a flat image, you want to, you know, you want it to print his eyes and you want it to print his nose and you want it to print the detail in his ear and his little hooves. So you need to have that box checked whenever you're going to print, then cut. When you don't check this box, this is the only thing that's going to come in. You're not going to get any of the coloring or any of the details within the cut lines. It's only going to bring in this cut line. So you want to check that box. And when this box is che checked, when your image comes in, it's automatically going to be set up for print. So let's hit Save Image. And we're going to check on him. Insert. Okay, so this is ready to go. It's one layer you can see here. I can't separate the pieces out. I brought this in as a flat image, so I can't, I can try to unflatten it, but there's nothing there but the one layer. You cannot pull these apart. So let's go back to flatten. So he's ready to go. If I decided I wanted to do something other than just print him, 
you have to unflatten it to change that. So anytime it's flattened, it's going to go to print. When it's unflattened, I can open this and I could just cut it. I could have it draw the outline. I could have it score the outline. Or I could have it print. So in general, whenever you want to print the image, make sure this has been flattened. And it will automatically bring it to a flat, one-layered, printable image. So let's put him up here. Now let's look at a PNG file. Again, we're going to go to Basic Upload, Continue, Browse, and I have on my desktop this PNG file. This is from a Lori Whitlock Home Sweet Home collection, digital collection, and most digital collections, the elements come in as PNG files. And you can get some really neat cut files this way. So let's hit Open. If you remember from our last video, I showed you the difference between a JPEG and a PNG file. The same applies for print and cut. PNG saves you the step of cleaning it up. And let me show you what I mean. Let's check complex, continue, let's scale down so you can see it. Now let's look and see what the software is looking at as far as the outline. And look, it's already perfect. That's why the PNG just works so much better, especially for print than cut. It, you don't have to mess around with cleaning it up and trying to tell the design space software what you want to cut. It already knows. It's going to cut around the edge of the image. So let's turn that off. Let's go to continue. We want the preserve image because we want it to print the red and the green and all the details of this flower. If we want, we can add some tags here. Let's hit save image. We'll check it and insert it. And again, since that preserve image box was checked, this is coming in as a printable image, one layer, and it's ready to go. We don't have to do anything with it. And again, if we try to unflatten this, there's nothing there to unflatten. It would, it's just one layer. We didn't divide it out into multiple cut files. So there's, it's just one layer and it's going to stay that way and we want to print it so let's keep it flattened. Alright, so let's try one more type of image. Let's try a vector image. Let's go upload image, vector image, browse, and I am going to use this OWL SVG file that I made earlier. And this is an SVG file, so it's got all different kinds of layers. Let's see what happens. Save image. Check on this. Insert image. Okay, now this is an SVG file, so it is going to come in with all these layers. We don't want it to cut all these layers separately. We could, if we wanted to, we could select the nose and have it print just the nose so that we could layer these images. But if we just want to print a flat image, we're going to select the whole thing and watch over here in the layers panel what happens when we hit flatten. It flattened all those layers into one. This is now just one. We can't right click. We can't right click and ungroup. We can't change anything. He's just one layer now. Okay, so now we have, this is a Cricut layered image. This is an Imagine printable image. This is a JPEG file. This is a PNG file. Move that a little bigger. And this is an SVG file. All of these can be print then cut. Now before we go much further, I want to tell you that right now Design Space is set up to print then cut on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. However, your printable usable area for a print and cut image depends on which browser you're using. 
If you're using Chrome, it's 5.5 by 8 inches. That means your images cannot be larger than that area to print on one page. Now, if you have multiple images and you want to print them on separate pages, you can do that. If you're using Firefox, it's 6 inches by 8.5 inches. Safari is 6 inches by 8.5 inches. Internet Explorer is 6 inches by 8.5 inches. So again, that's the largest that a single image could be and still be able to print and cut. And I'll show you the reason for that in a moment. I do want to point out this is on the Cricut website and it's 10 things you need to know about print and cut. And it will walk you through, you know, the update for the plugin, the firmware, the calibration to get ready for print and cut. Um, you probably have already done that when you set up your machine. Uh, it gives you, you know, a lot of tips about the print and cut. So if you have any questions, this is a good reference. So let's go back to our image, or our images. I'm just going to print and cut. They're all going to work the same. So let's just take, get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. I'm going to show you a Cricut image. And I'll show you the, the Cricut printable image. These are all going to, to do the same thing, but for now let's just use these two. And I'm going to make them a little bit bigger, but remember, I have to stay within six inches by eight and a half inches. So we'll just keep them at that size. Now, when we hit go, this is the screen that comes up. There's a few things you need to know about this screen. One, we can check over here. Yes, we're set to print and cut. We are set for eight and a half by 11. That is the only option right now that may change in the future, but for right now, they've set up design space to print then cut for eight and a half by 11 material. You could mirror your image here if you had something with words and you were putting it on a shirt or something, but we're just going to leave that unchecked. If you have an amount due, it'll be right here. Up here is a settings button, and the only option under here is bleed. And what that means is Design space is set up so that when you want to print then cut, it's going to add a little bit of extra color all around this edge so that when it cuts it, you're going to get an absolute perfect edge. I always leave that checked. If you don't want to do that, it, it's still going to retain, even though it puts that bleed on there, it's going to retain its original perfect size. It just adds some extra ink around the line so that there isn't any white space showing. If for some reason you don't want that, you can just uncheck it. It's recommended that you use it. You're going to get a better solid image. And I've done it both ways, and, and it's calibrated so well that even without it, it does a really great job. But I just prefer to keep it on. So I'm going to, and you see the difference? If you look at it, that's no bleed. And it gives you a warning. And then when you click the bleed, Watch, I'm going to click the bleed in a second, but watch the, the area right around the edge of these images. And again, it's going to cut in the middle of that gray. So it's not going to change your image. It just gives it some ink around the edges. Okay, so also when you look at this mat, you see what are these funny little marks? These are registration marks. These are what tells the software and the explorer exactly where your image is so that it knows where to cut to get around the edges of these images. This is also why you're only allowed a certain printable area in here because you've got to have room for these registration marks. And they will move, you know, if I had my image bigger, that you know, this one would be down here. So they'll move accordingly. They are spaced so that it'll save you the most paper. Okay, so all that's left now is print and continue. I'm going to set this up for my HP printer. I just have a regular HP inkjet printer, inkjet, laser, any printer's fine. You don't have to have anything special. It's set on letter size, 100% scale, hit OK. This brings up my printer options. I always use brochure matte paper setting, even if I'm just printing on white cardstock. Um, I do have a favorite paper 
that I like to print on, and I will show you that at the end of the video. Uh, paper does make a huge difference, especially with print and cut, and the results that you will get uh, as far as how vibrant your inks are showing up and how well the finished product looks. I'm going to put this over to best, and I'm going to hop over here to my camera. I'm going to hit print. Okay, and you can see it printed my image. I'm going to focus there. It printed my image with the registration marks. This is what tells the Cricut where the images are so that it can cut them. Okay, so the next thing we have to do, we're going to place it on our Cricut mat, and it's important that you get it in this very edge. Okay. Okay, so now on the screen it just tells us to load our mat. I've got my paper on the mat. I'm going to load it. Hit the load button. It's telling us to set our dial. We're going to put that on cardstock and then we're going to hit go. what it's going to do, it's going to scan down to the edge of the page. Now it's going to go up. There's going to be a, small, a light come on right here. And it's looking for that first registration mark. And what that's doing is telling the machine where exactly my paper is placed so that it gets a really close cut. Now it's going to read the second registration mark. This one doesn't take as long. It has an idea where it's at from that first one. Now it's going to read the third one. And now it's going to cut the image. Then we eject. And here we have our images freshly cut out. Let's remove the paper. And there you have it. And you can see both images have zero black edge or white edges on them. I mentioned that I had a favorite paper that I like to use for items when I'm using print then cut. It is this Staples Photo Supreme double sided matte paper. This is a really great weight of paper, it's a 61 pound paper. 
and it uh, prints really, really vibrant colors. My second favorite is this Epson brochure paper. And believe me, the paper does make a big difference. Well, that's it. That's the end of Lesson 4. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to visit me at lauriestory.com. I'll have more tutorials and projects using the Cricut Explorer soon. Thanks!